my soapbox for just a couple minutes and uh, <clears throat> I kind of feel it's important uh, to make this video. Um, and I think everybody knows what's been going on with Tom and I don't want to belabor it. I don't want to beat anybody up over it because um, that's not what I do. Uh, I try and keep things positive and I think there's some positive lessons uh, with what's going on. The first thing um, that I want to touch on is uh, how you interpret rules, uh, how you uh, educate yourself about rules, and all of that sort of thing. Um, I was told a long time ago by a good friend of mine uh, that you have to own information. Sorry, there's a bug. Uh, you have to own information. So, uh, if somebody tells you something, it may be true, it may not be true. They may know what they're talking about, they may not know what they're talking about. Um, generally, what people tell you is documented somewhere. And uh, I, I deal with this every day at my office. Uh, we deal with fire codes, building codes, all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of rules. Uh, there's two books about that thick with rules on how you can design buildings and what you can and can't do and then generally every jurisdiction has exceptions and all that kind of fun stuff and if I go ask somebody uh, what the rule is and how to apply it on my project uh, they may think they know the rule they may really believe that what they're telling me is true but they may not understand my situation or they may not understand the rule and so uh, my personal the way I deal with that is if I do ask somebody I always go look it up afterwards so whatever they tell me is is generally correct um, but I look it up at that point I own the information I own it I've looked at it I own it until that happens I'm never satisfied I'm never comfortable thinking that I know it um, What's been going on with Tom uh, is, in a nutshell, that uh, somebody's quoting an EPA rule, and the rule is this 6H rule. And if anybody wants to look it up for themselves so they can own it, just look up 6, the number 6, H, EPA. Just Google that. It'll come up. You'll see an EPA link. You can click on it. It's about stripping cars, and it's about painting cars, or stripping surfaces and painting surfaces and they have a general outline of, of what is and what isn't. Uh, in there is a little paragraph that says who does this apply to, who does this not apply to, okay? Uh, I looked all this up before I painted my car in my garage because I was warned that somebody might call the EPA on me if I paint my car in my garage. Uh, under the who does this not apply to, is people painting their cars at home and hobbyists. Uh, they allow you to paint two cars every year in your garage, uh, two full vehicles. Um, they also allow you to do all kinds of other little things. But you can paint two cars. So if you're like me and you're painting uh, Ed the Kid, he's going to paint his car in his garage. There's no problem with it. There's absolutely no problem with it as far as I can interpret the rules. You've got to read them for yourself. That's how I interpret it. Um, if you do want to paint cars and you have a business, you have to have a booth. And the booth has to have filters. It has to have negative pressure. All that really means is that it has to have a fan pulling air out of the booth. There's no definition, as far as I can tell, on what that booth is. It has to have a roof. It has to have walls. Uh, it has to have three walls, I think. So it has to be able to be enclosed and draw air through it and some other little things like that. Um, but from what I can tell, a barn can be a booth. It doesn't have to be out of a catalog. could be wrong, but that's how I interpret the rules based on what I've read. So uh, as long as the, the biggest rule is 98% uh, filters on the air that's going out of the building, and I think you can just go buy those. So uh, if you have a barn or an outbuilding and you're exhausting air through a 98% filter and you've got things caulked and sealed, 
there's a pretty good chance that you're compliant. Um, that's just me interpreting the rules. Um, so, you know, I think the important thing is, uh, you know, we're all doing these things and trying to help each other out and do things uh, for ourselves. And the the fact is, if you listen to everybody out there, if you actually listened to everybody out there, uh, you'd never get it done. Because most of the people out there, if you ask them for advice, they'll lead you to failure. And I'm not saying the guys in the gang, I'm saying people at large. Okay. Um, if I had listened to anyone, uh, this car would have gone to the junkyard, it would have gone to the crusher, it would have gone uh, cut up, sold off as pieces, whatever it was, because this is too far gone. You can't, you can't restore a car like this. You can't do it if you ask anybody else. You ask somebody like one of us, uh, I think the big difference is in my world, um, failure is not an option. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you can't screw up once in a while. But failure in my book is determined as not finding the solution. So, uh, fun little story. I had a Dodge truck. Pulled the transmission in and out of it six times to repair the transmission. Six times. Failure is not an option. It's just the way it goes. So, uh, bottom line is, you know, find a way to do it. Find out things for yourself. When you're doing something, find the solution. And I'm good friends with Tom. I talk to Tom on the phone all the time. And I know Tom's going to find the right solution. And I know he's not going to have any problems. So, that said, uh, I'm going to step off my soapbox and uh, get back to watching basketball, I think. So, anyway, guys, have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Don't let your meat loaf.